Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Hungarian Living Podcast. I'm Hannah, Liz and Dawn's daughter. This week, we're going to do something a little different. I hope you enjoy it. Hi, welcome to the Hungarian Living Podcast. I'm your host, Elizabeth Sepovas. Our goal is to discover, celebrate, and share Hungarian heritage and encourage you to do it too. We'll touch on food, travel, history, music, and language, and share stories from our listeners. We're glad you're here. This is a podcast where we'll encourage you to dig deeper to learn about your Hungarian heritage in a variety of ways. We'll have thought-provoking conversations and share resources. So whether you know a little or a lot about being Hungarian, this is the place to be. During this last year, my parents had extra time to dig through some boxes of my grandma's writings. She wrote a lot of things, mainly for children, and among typewritten stories are letters to and from publishers and agents, and it has been really fun to look through. She translated a number of Hungarian folk tales from Hungarian to English and had always dreamed of publishing a book one day. Because life changed for her, as it often does for all of us, she didn't get a chance to see that dream become a reality. But my mom plans to put this collection in written form for all her children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. So as my mom works on this podcast, from time to time, we will record one of her translated folk tales because they are treasures to us, and we hope you will see the value of them too. My grandmother surely hasn't been the only person to do this work, but on the correspondence, I see dates from the mid-60s, so she definitely had the idea and was working on this project 50 years ago. This week, I will be reading King Matthias and the Transylvanian Innkeeper. So let me introduce you to these folktales by explaining a little bit about the man behind the legends. King Matthias was the ruler of Hungary from 1440 to 1490. He was the great Hungarian king of the Renaissance and one of the greatest public figures in Hungarian history. One of his prime concerns was the alleviation of the suffering of the serfs, and very often he would disguise himself in peasant clothes and walk among his people. He insisted that truth and justice be upheld at all times, and because of his many actions along this line, He was loved by all his people. This is why there are so many tales, legends, and myths centering around him. King Matthias was so well loved by the common people that the tales spread to the surrounding Ukrainian, Slovakian, Slovenian, and even Romanian folklore. Here's King Matthias and the Transylvanian Innkeeper. In the Transylvanian village of Laka lived an innkeeper named Mr. Tornai. One day, out of nowhere, a student appeared at his inn and knocked on the door. Mr. Tornai welcomed the student warmly. My name is Martin Nudge, said the student, as he removed his cap, and I work in the king's court. Could you give me a room for the night? Certainly, said Mr. Tornai, as he went to prepare things for the guest. A student from the king's court, he thought to himself. I wouldn't be surprised if it were King Matthias himself, wandering around the country, disguised in his student clothes. Well, I won't be fooled. I will treat him as a king should be treated. And with that thought in mind, he hurried to find the stable boy. John, ordered Mr. Tornai, put the student's horse up in your room and place a feather bed under him. Give him the very best straw that we have in the stable. John gave Mr. Tornai a very strange look, but said nothing. When the student heard what was going on, he protested. Please, you must not do this. My horse doesn't belong in a room, and neither does he belong on a feather bed. Just leave everything to me, replied Mr. Tornai. I know where respect is due. Then Mr. Tornai took the student into the largest and best furnished room at the inn. This is far more than a student could expect. We should reserve this room for more special guests, said the student when he saw the room. Again, all Mr. Tornai said was, just leave everything to me. I know where respect is due. For supper, Mr. Tornay had special oxen meat and also had his servant prepare a special rabbit for his guest. The student was served on silver plates and was given the best wine to drink. Do you treat all your guests this way? asked the student. Don't worry about that. Just leave everything to me, answered Mr. Tornay again. When the student returned to the castle and told the king what had happened and how he was treated by Mr. Tornay, the king shook his head sadly. It is too bad that Mr. Tornai doesn't treat everyone with equal respect. He has a lesson to learn from your visit. I wonder if he has learned it, said the King Matthias. The next time I am in his village, I will stop at the inn and pay him a visit to find out what kind of man he is. Not long afterward, King Matthias was planning a trip in that area, 
and decided to pay a visit to Mr. Tornai, the innkeeper. Here I am, began the king, a student from King Matthias's court. He smiled and with a wink said, My name is Matthias. Well, thought Mr. Tornai to himself, this one even uses the king's first name, but I won't be fooled this time. Put the horse in the stable and give him some food, ordered Mr. Tornai to his stable boy. Mr. Tornai decided that he wouldn't waste a room on a student, so he called after John. Let the student stay in the same room with you, John. You can take care of him. Mr. Tornai quickly went about his own business. Indeed, I have some brains in my head, too, he thought. Every student isn't a king, and this time my neighbors won't laugh at me the way they did the last time I treated a student as a king. John the stable boy took good care of Matthias. Together they ate and drank and enjoyed each other's company. The next morning, the student thanked John for all he had done for him. By the way, I forgot to give this letter over to Mr. Tornay. It is from the king. Will you, John, take it up to Mr. Tornay's room? When Mr. Tornay read the letter, he was very surprised. I command my good follower, George Tornay, to take leave immediately with his stable boy, John, and come to Buddha. I have some things I would like to discuss with him. King Matthias. Bring that student here quickly, called Mr. Tornay. Let us find out from him what the king wants. By the time John returned, the room was empty and Matthias was gone. A short time later, Mr. Tornay left to visit the city of Buddha and make his appearance before the king. King Matthias happened to be in his garden when Mr. Tornay arrived. Mr. Tornay could see the king's beautiful robe all glittering with finery, and as he entered the gate, he bowed three times before even getting close to the king. Your Majesty, you commanded me to come before you began Mr. Tornay, but when he looked into the king's face, the rest of his words stuck in his throat. The king quickly began giving his orders. Take this man's horse and put it in one of my rooms, on a feather bed, too. That's what Mr. Tornay did when one of my students paid him a visit. It's the least we can do. Your noble majesty, began Mr. Tornay again, but the king didn't allow him a word and continued quickly. John, you were so kind to me, and I will have you as my guest. You shall be dressed in the finest clothes and seated next to me at the table. Poor Mr. Tornay was too embarrassed to move. Well, well, Mr. Tornay, were you joking with me? You had two guests at your inn. One was a student and one was a king. You treated them very differently. But how does a man know when you are a king? That is not important, answered King Matthias. It is not necessary to know that. If you treat all your guests with equal respect, you will never be fooled. After all, Mr. Tornay, no one's horse belongs on a feather bed, not even a king's horse. And no human being should be treated with less respect than a horse. Do you understand, Mr. Tornay? asked the king. Mr. Tornay just nodded his head without saying a word. But now, said the king with a laugh, I have had my joke on you, and I hope you have had a good lesson and a little fun too. Come, you and John will be my very special guests at dinner, and we shall all have a good time before you leave. The end. Hungarian Living is a division of Mudyar Marketing, the Hungarian store, where you can find meaningful gifts with Hungarian style. Check us out at mudyarmarketing.com. And special thanks to Stephen Chichek and the Animal Cannibals for the show music. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode of Hungarian Living, please subscribe and share this podcast with your favorite Hungarian. Check out our show notes for links to resources mentioned in this episode. If you have a question or comment, email us at podcast at hungarianliving.com. We'll catch you next time.